Can we stop this Trump move that would privatize Social Security? Check this out. Leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. So I got my email this morning from Social Security Works. Uh, and today would be a great day for Joe Biden to fire Social Security Administration Commissioner Andrew Saul and Deputy Commissioner David Black. Yeah, these two Trumpies are still running the Social Security Administration, making it harder for people to access their benefits, making it easier to strip people of disability benefits, stuff like that. But that's just the stuff that's like at the, you know, bubbled up to the surface, uh, up to the very top. There's a fascinating piece uh, published over at uh, Common Dreams titled uh, Advocates Sound Alarm Over Quiet Trump-Era Move That Could Further Privatize Medicare. And I'm like, whoa? Uh, you know, Medicare works really, really well, at least in my experience. I've been on it for five years, and I love it. Um, so what's the deal? Let's check in with our old buddy Alex Lawson, of Social, the executive director of Social Security Works, socialsecurityworks.org is the website also strengthensocialsecurity.org and alex of course you can tweet him at ssworks or at a law 202 uh, alex welcome back to the program um, tell me about this uh, this trump uh, you know what what little trick are they are they trying to play here with us on social security so tom uh, first thanks for having me and um you know, in a lot of our discussions, you talk about how they've drilled holes in Medicare uh, and things like that. That's where they they sort of uh, insert the for profit companies into our public programs. Uh, and this is that this is uh, this is exactly that. And I'm, I'm really happy to be talking about it with you, because usually it takes us a lot longer to bubble these attacks uh, up to the surface because they are so wonky so behind the scenes, they're buried deep in the rules and regulations. Um, this is this is a uh, a project that they are doing. It's just an investigation uh, in how to make Medicare more efficient, as they say. But really, what it is is it's put together by the for-profit insurers. Um, they got it in during Trump, uh, and it directs traditional Medicare. So basically, without people knowing what's going on, you know, they might get a piece of paper saying that this is happening, but is, are people going to follow it? Um, doubtful it, it, with history as, um, you know, based, based on history. And what it does is it just shifts people over to a managed care situation where you go from traditional Medicare, where if you get sick, you go to the doctor or you get injured, you go to the hospital, uh, you get the care that you need, full stop, that's it. Um, and in this one, there are networks again, right? So there's incentives put in but for these corporations who are running it to keep you in network. Uh, and that means there's out of network and there are fees and all sorts of uh, things that we don't know uh, what powers they're going to be given. But we do know that the only way that private insurers make money uh, is by taking our premiums and denying our care. It's the denying our care uh, that they're being given the power to do again uh, in the form of what is going to be an investigation in improving the uh, uh, efficiency of Medicare. But we've seen that. So before, it sounds like, you know, that's how Medicare Advantage was sold to us. I was just going to say, it sounds like they are trying to force everybody into Medicare Advantage. I mean, if, if you sign up for Medicare Advantage, um, you know, which is a tragic thing to do, frankly. Um, but if you sign up for Medicare Advantage, uh, odds are you're going to end up with a private insurance company uh, that it says, okay, you have to go to this doctor, you have to go to that hospital. If you go to any other doctor or any other hospital, you are going to have to pay for it out of your pocket. There's a whole list of things here that we won't pay for. We don't cover surprise billings. We don't cover out-of-network stuff. And, and people think, oh, it's wonderful. I got Medicare Advantage. Now I can get a free eye exam or I can get my teeth cleaned. And, and they don't realize that once they get sick, all hell is going to break loose and they're going to get 10, 20, you know, 30,000, 100,000 dollar bills, um, you know, if, if they don't. If, and, and not only that, before uh, their doctors can do anything. I mean, a, a relative of mine went into his doctor the other day. He's over 65 on Medicare and he's on regular Medicare, just like me. And uh, the doctor said, well, I think you need this, but I've got to check with your insurer first. And 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 my my relative said, uh, 
Hey, you know, what are you talking about? I have Medicare. And, he, and the doctor was like, oh, you don't have Medicare Advantage? And he was like, no, I have regular Medicare. And he was like, oh, good, good. We're fine then. You know, I can just good. order this test. And, and I mean, it's like, but it sounds like the way this is going to work is they're going to pick certain parts of the country. And some people are going to get a letter that says you are now... Uh, all of your Medicare uh, services, instead of just going to any doctor you want or any hospital, you know, and getting any test that they think you need, and Medicare will just pay for it. Instead, you're going to have to go to this particular network for this particular PPO, and you're now enrolled in Kaiser, or you're now enrolled in United Health, or something like that. Is that how it's going to work? Yes, probably. Though they won't, uh, you know, you won't know that you're in. This is, I think, one of the most despicable things is. Uh, the reason that doctor phrased it that way is because most people don't know, you know, like your relative was able to say, no, I'm in traditional Medicare. But most people don't know that they, they just think, oh, this is Medicare. Right. That they're not going right. to know that they've been put into um, some other thing. They're going to get a notice, uh, but it's going to be very confusing. And they certainly aren't going to highlight in the first sentence. This means that your care can now be denied. Oh, and by the way, you don't get a choice on it. And in fact, it's worse right. than that, Tom, because people did get a choice. They chose traditional Medicare, right? And then this is overriding that choice uh, and saying, we're going to put you into uh, this managed care situation. Again, what managed care means is uh, they make more money by denying you care. Uh, that's that's the only way these companies make money. And I, I know you know this, but for your listeners and viewers, I think people should appreciate that the the cash cow for these private corporate insurers now is actually getting these types of uh, contracts with uh, the government. These, that's where they're making so much money. And so this is a very lucrative business for the corporate insurers. Uh, and we have to fight it back, knowing that they're not going to just stop here. Uh, this is just one of the holes that they're trying to drill in Medicare. Right. And, and in fact, these two uh, people who are running Medicaid, the, the Social Security uh, Administration right now, were, were apparently instrumental in putting this into place. And Biden does need to fire them both. What, what, can, uh, what can people do? How can we speak out? Who, who, who do we direct this to? As you said, this, you know, it could sound very, very wonky. And, and I'm guessing that probably the majority of legislators have no idea that this is even going on. What can we do, Alex Lawson? So uh, luckily we have uh, at Social Security Works, we have uh, our senior advisor on Medicare, Diane Archer, who is really the person who unearthed this and has turned it into uh, a more public facing campaign. So if you come to SocialSecurityWorks.org, we're, we're staying on top of this. But you're exactly right. We went to uh, Senator Wyden, who is critical on these fights uh, and is a, is a true champion of Social Security. Uh, and he was really clear. He, you know, no one knows what this is. Uh, no one except wow. the lobbyists for those corporate insurers are who, who got it in know what it is. So the first thing we need to do is we need to educate uh, congressional offices that this exists uh, and that it's a danger to traditional Medicare, to our Medicare. Uh, so that is what people can do on their own. They can call their members of Congress, call their senators, let them know that they don't want uh, any experimenting with handing over our Medicare to these corporate uh, these corporations to profit from uh, and just get offices familiar with that. That actually works, as you know, and we talk about all the mm. time. Um, offices do listen. And so if they start hearing about this, then when we go in there on the inside, it's not just us in D.C. It's coming from both sides. But that's where we are. We need to educate people about this attack vector. So go to two things, two steps. Number one, go to socialsecurityworks.org, get on their mailing list and read all about it, number one. Number two, call 202-224-3121 and talk to your member of the House and both of your senates and educate them.